Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One Good Vibrations at your service to describe a scheme for shortening a 160 meter vertical antenna to half of its quarter wave height. Now this is a ground mounted antenna but it's shortened instead of 132 feet high which a quarter wavelength full size antenna would be you can shorten it to 66 feet which is half of that and then put guy wires down from the top insulators right here and here I suppose I should tell you that that's what they are, shouldn't I? I mean, how are you going to know what they are if I don't label everything, right? 33 feet of conductive wire, an insulator, and then non-conductive uh, wire, or, well, it could be conductive, but best not. Best to have nylon cord or something like that. Back all the way down to some good stakes not the kinds you eat the kinds you pound into the ground only two of these are shown there should be four of them you might also install intermediate rope guy wires I'll just draw it right through the label right there like that but these are all non-conductive so you have a 66 foot vertical antenna with these 33 foot um, conductive portions of the four guy wires at the top. Now when these four conductive portions of the guy wires at the top form a capacity hat or a capacitance hat and generally speaking the radius of a capacitance hat uh, it should be about half of the height of the missing vertical portion that you're replacing with the capacity hat. So instead of 66 feet, these are 33 feet. Uh, you'd have to tweak these to tune the antenna to the exact frequency that you might want to operate on, say 1.810 megahertz. The, uh, an additional advantage of having a capacitively loaded antenna like this is that it has a broader bandwidth than, I, than it would if, for example, you used a loading coil at the feed point to shorten the antenna. And it's also a good deal more efficient than any inductively loaded antenna. The fact that these slope down uh, doesn't really affect the radiation from this 66 foot portion to a very great extent because this is very low current portion of the antenna whereas the highest current portion is this vertical that I have now made black somehow with little red stripes. Isn't that fun? So you run your coax to your radio. You know how to connect the feed point. The shield goes to a <clears throat> well, uh, a, a well-made long ground rod, and the center conductor to the antenna. I have not shown the radials because the diagram is messy enough of it as it is. You get the basic gist of it, though. 66-foot vertical antenna should work just about as well as a full-size 132-foot quarter-wave vertical on the 160-meter band. Now, very few people can uh, afford or have the real estate to deal with a 132-foot vertical antenna, but 66 feet is manageable. As a matter of fact, some telescoping vertical uh, antennas are sold on the market today that go up to 66 feet and you can buy them at a reasonable price through a vendors uh, I think some of them are actually advertised in QST magazine 
This is a ground mounted vertical again. The radial should be uh, buried slightly underneath the surface of the earth so uh, they don't cause a hazard to people walking in the vicinity and connected of course to the ground rod. Coax to your radio is standard 50 ohm coax the lowest loss coax you can afford uh, probably uh, they used to call it RG8U now I think it's RG213 or something like that but um, that's your complete installation for 160 meters half the height of a full-size antenna but just about all of the performance of a full-size quarter wavelength ground mounted vertical for 160 meters. Stan Gibalisco W1GV saying 73 which means best regards and so long which in my native fist translates to da 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 da